Yeah, verse 12. Mm -hmm. uh, I read, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone and pearls. Okay, the first I will open the Bible. We can see, we can see this, uh, this verse at all. Uh, it's uh, Revelation 19, 12. Uh, in a, a, a new version. Okay. Cargos of gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, fine linen. Ah, it's about merchants. Yeah, the first we read, uh, verse 11. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over here because no one buys the cargos uh, anymore. Cargos of gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet cloth, every sort of Citron wood and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble. Mm -hmm. And verse 12, we read, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone and pearls signifies uh, that uh, they no longer have these because they have no spiritual goods and truths. Or uh, to which uh, such things correspond. By their merchandise, uh, nothing else is signified than the things they are named. For it is known that they have gold, silver, and precious stone, and pearls in abundance, and that they have gained them by their religious things, <coughs> which uh, they made holy and divine those who were in babylon had such things before the last judgment for it was then conceded to them to form to themselves as it were heavens and to procure such things to themselves from heaven by various arts year to fill sellers with them as in the world, mm -hmm. sellers is uh, what it means. Sellers like uh, it's like mm -hmm. wine cellar, mm -hmm. basement to fill sellers with them as in the world. But after the last judgment, when the fictitious, the fictitious, ah, fictitious heaven is like false heaven, yeah, fictitious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fictitious. Heavens were destroyed, and then all those things were reduced, were reduced to dust and ashes, and carried away by an east wind, and stream as a profane dust over their hells. But of these things, read the things uh, described from things seen. In the little in the little work of the last judgment and Babylon destroyed, published in London, 1758. <clears throat> After that overthrow and their casting down into hell, they are in such a miserable state that they do not know what gold, silver, a precious stone, and a pearl are. The reason is that gold, silver, and a precious stone correspond to spiritual goods and truths and pearls to the knowledges of them and as they have not any truths and goods nor the knowledges of them but in their stead uh, evils and falsities and the knowledges of this they cannot have those precious things but such as correspond to their state which are vile materials and of ugly color except some seashells on which they set their hearts as they did before on the precious things named above it is to be known that there are in the spiritual world all things which are in the natural world with the difference only that all the things in the spiritual world are correspondences they correspond to their interiors. 
They have splendid and magnificent things, who are in wisdom from divine truth and goods from the Lord, through the Word. And they who are in insanity from falsities and evils have the opposite. There is such correspondence from creation when what is spiritual in the mind is brought down into the essential of the body in which account everyone they knows the quality of another as soon as he comes into his own chamber. From these things it may be evident that by the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stone and pearl, pearls is signified that they have these no longer, because they have no, not spiritual goods and truth, nor the knowledges of good and truth, to which such, such things correspond. That, God, that gold from correspondence signifies good, and silver truth may be seen above. That a precious stone signifies spiritual truth. That pearls signify the knowledges of truth and good. And fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet signifies that they no longer have these things, because they have not the celestial goods and truths to which such things correspond. By the above named, which were gold, silver, precious stone and pearls, I signified in general spiritual goods and truths, as was said above. But by these, which are fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, I signified in general celestial goods and truths. For with those who are in heaven and in the church, there are spiritual goods and truths, and there are celestial goods and truths. Spiritual goods and truths are of wisdom, and celestial goods and truths are of love. And because they have not these goods and truths, for the evils and falsities opposite to them, these are therefore mentioned, for they fall off in order. Now as the case with this is the same as with the former, there is no, there is no need of further explanation than that in the preceding article. What fine linen in particular signifies will be told in the following chapter in explaining these words. The fine linen is the just deeds of the saints. Revelation 19.8 That purple signifies celestial good and scarlet celestial truth may be seen above. By silk is signified mediating celestial good and truth, good from its softness and truth from its brightness. It is mentioned only in Ezekiel 16, 10, 13. And all thine wood and every vessel of ivory signifies that they no longer have this, because they have not the natural goods and truth to which such things correspond. These things are similar to those which were explained above, with the difference only that by those named the first spiritual goods and truths are meant, which are treated of above, and that by those mentioned in the second place celestial goods and truths are meant, as explained just above, and that by these now mentioned, which are thine wood and vessel of ivory, natural goods and truths are meant. For there, for there are three degrees of wisdom and love, and thence three degrees of truth and goodness. Uh -huh, no. And then three degrees of truth and good. Mm -hmm. The first degree is called the celestial, the second spiritual and the third natural. These three degrees are in every man from birth. And, to and also in general, they are in heaven and in the church which is the cause of there being three heavens, the highest, the middle, and the lowest, altogether distinct from each other according to those degrees, in like manner the Lord's church on earth.
But what is but what its qualities with those who are in the celestial degree? And what in those who are in the spiritual degree? And what in those who are in the natural degree? Does not belong to this place to explain, but see concerning them in the angelic wisdom, concerning the divine love and wisdom. Chapter 3, where degrees are treated of. Here only that with those who are of Babylon, there are not spiritual goods and truths, no celestial goods and truths, and not even natural goods and truths. That spiritual things are mentioned in the first place is because many among them can be spiritual, provided they hold the word holy in heart, as they say with their mouth, but then it, but they cannot become celestial because they do not approach the Lord, but approach living and dead men and worship them. This is the reason why the celestial things are named in the second place. By dying wood is signified natural good, because wood in the word signifies good, and a stone truth, and thine wood takes its name from two, and two also signifies good. That it is natural good is because wood is not a costly material like gold, silver, precious stone, pearl, fine linen, purple silk, and scarlet stone likewise. It is the same with ivory, by which natural truth is signified. Ivory signifies natural truth, because it is white, and can be polished. And because it protrudes, protrudes is like protrudes. Protrudes. Ah, protrudes. Sorry, protrudes, how to pronounce. Protrudes. Protrude, protrude, protrudes like acts, maybe. Protrudes. From the mouth of an elephant. And uh, likewise makes his strength. The ivory may be the natural truth of that good which is signified by thine wood. It is said a vessel of ivory. For by a vessel that which contains is signified here truth the containment of good that wood that wood signifies good may be in some degree evident from these passages that the bitter waters in mara were made sweet by wood cast in exodus 1525. That the tables of stone on which the law was written were laid up in the ark made of sheeting wood. Exodus 25, 10, 16. <coughs> <coughs> that the temple at Jerusalem was covered and sheeted with, within with wood. 1 Kings 6, 10. 15. That the altar in the wilderness was made of wood. Exodus 27, 1, 6. Besides from this, the stone crieth out from the wall, and the beam of wood answereth. Habakkuk 2, 11. They shall seize thy wealth and make a prey of thy merchandise and thy stones and thy woods shall they put into the midst of the sea ezekiel 26 12. it was said to the prophet that he should take one piece of wood and write upon it the name of judah and of the sons of israel and also the name of joseph and ephraim and should make them into one piece. Peace. Ezekiel 37, 16, 19. We drink our waters for silver, and our wood cometh for a price. Lamentations 5, 4. If anyone goeth into a forest 
with the companion and his axe falleth from the wood upon his companion that he die he shall flee into a city of refuge Deuteronomy 19:5 This was because wood signifies good and thus that he had not put his companion to death from mere evil or with evil intention but from an error because he was in good besides other places but by wood in the opposite sense he signified what is evil and uh, cursed as that they made graven images of wood and adored them deuteronomy 4 23 28 isaiah 37 19 40 20 jeremiah 10 3 8 ezekiel 20 32 also that hanging upon wood was a curse deuteronomy 21 22 23 the ivory signifies natural truth may be evident from the passages where ivory is mentioned as ezekiel 27 6 15 amos 3 15 6 4 psalms 45 8 <clears throat> and every vessel of precious wood and of brass and iron and marble signifies that they no longer have these because they have not the scientific goods and truths in matters of the church to which such things correspond these are similar to the to the things explained above with the difference that by this the scientifics scientifics which are the ultimates of man's natural mind ultimates 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 mm -hmm. ultimates like final are uh, the ultimates of man's natural mind are meant which as they differ in quality from the essence that is in them are called vessels of precious wood of, bra of brass of iron and of marble for by vessels are signified scientifics here in matters of the church because scientifics scientifics like scientifics scientifics because scientifics are the contain containers of good and truth as vessels are the containers of oil and wine scientifics are also in great variety and the a receptacle a receptacle is the memory a receptacle is the memory that they are of great varieties because man's interiors are in them they are also introduced into the memory either from intellectual thought or from hearing or from reading and then according to the various perception from the rational all these are within scientifics, which appears when they are reproduced, which happens when the man speaks or thinks. But what is signified by vessels of precious wood or brass of iron and of marble shall be briefly told. By a vessel of precious wood is signified a scientific from rational good and truth. By a vessel of brass, a scientific from natural good is signified by a vessel of iron a scientific from natural truth is signified and by a vessel of marble is signified a scientific from the appearance of good and truth that wood signifies good may be seen just above that good and at the same time rational truth are here signified by precious wood is because wood signifies good and precious is predicated of truth for one kind of good is signified by the wood of the olive tree 
another by that of the cedar, the thick and fir, the poplar, and the oak. That a vessel of brass and of iron signifies what is scientific from natural good and truth is because all the metals, as gold, silver, brass, iron, tin, lead, tin, like any kind it's of aluminum, metal, yeah. basically. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, tin. Iron, tin, lead, in the word, signify goods and truths. They signify because they correspond, and because they correspond, they are also in heaven. For all things, there are correspondences. But what each of the metals signifies from correspondence, this is not the place to confirm from the word, only to show by a few passages that brass signifies natural good, and hence iron, and hence iron natural truth, as may be seen from these. That the feet of the Son of Man appeared like unto brass, as if glowing in a furnace revelation 1 15 that there appeared to daniel a man whose feet were as the brightness of polished brass daniel 10 5 6 that the feet of the cherubim also appeared glittering as the brightness of polished brass ezekiel 1 7 that the feet signifies that the feet signify the natural may be seen. That an angel was seen like the appearance of brass. The appearance of brass that Ezekiel 43. That the state seen by Nebuchadnezzar was as to its head gold as to the breast and arm silver, as to the belly and the side brass, as to the leg sign. Daniel 2, 32, 33. By which statue, statue the successive states of the church were represented, which were called by the ancients the ages of gold, silver, brass, and iron. <coughs> Since brass signified the natural, and the Israelitish people were merely natural, therefore the Lord's natural was represented by the brazen serpent, which they that were bitten by the serpents should look upon and be healed. Numbers 21, 6, 8, 9, John 3, 14, 15. That brass signifies natural good may also be seen in Isaiah 60, 17, Jeremiah 15, 20, 21, Ezekiel 27, 13, Deuteronomy 8, 7, 9, 33, 24, 25. He who does not know what is signified by gold, silver, precious stone, pearl, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, th uh, thine, wood, and ivory vessel, precious wood, brass, iron, marble, and a vessel, may wonder that such things are enumerated and uh, may think that they are only words multiplied for the exaltation of the subject. But it may be evident from the explanations that not a single word is unmeaning, and that by them it is fully described, that they who have confirmed themselves in the dogmas of that religious <laughs> persuasion... Sorry, what? No, no, keep going, keep going. I just, ah, I just mm -hmm. need... Yeah, I, I, yeah, we, we can finish this uh, verse and maybe we, we can comment, uh, tell, tell, you, tell our opinion and discuss that maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell uh, me what you think, mm -hmm. but keep going, keep going. This is all talking about one verse mm -hmm. in Revelation, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, chapter 18, uh, verse 12. I read uh, verse 12, it's like... Uh, 
can see uh, in NIV, NIV, for example, yeah, it's about the meaning of like li fine linen, purple silk, scarlet cloth. Mm -hmm. It's like it's spiritual meaning from other passages of the word. Yeah, yeah. Okay, keep going. Mm -hmm. But it may be evident from the explanations that not a single word is unmeaning, and that by them it is fully described. That they who have confirmed themselves in the dogmas of that religious persuasion have not a single truth, and if not a single truth, they have not a single good, which is a good of the church. I have spoken with those who have confirmed themselves in that religious persu persuasion, also with some who were delegates in the councils of Na Nice, of Nicaea. the Luth Lutheran, oh, Nicaea. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mm -hmm. Nicaea. Nice. Uh, of the Lutheran and of Trent, ah, it's not Lutheran, Lutheran, it's Lateran, maybe it's like any, Lutheran, ah, yeah. it's like council, it's, maybe it's a council. Lateran. Yeah, it's not Lutheran, it's Lateran, it's about council, who oh. were delegates in the councils of Nice, it, it's mm -hmm. like Nicaea council, yeah? Oh, and, yeah, that's uh, nice. nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh -huh. nice. yeah, it's Nicaea, nice. but it, you can also write it like that too, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like maybe, yeah, like maybe it's like three councils because there were three councils. Uh, or in the councils of Nice, of the Lateran, and of Trent, who in the beginning believed that what they had decreed were pure and holy truths. But after instruction and enlightenment, then given from heaven, confessed that they did not see one truth, but because they had then confirmed themselves in them more than others after the, the enlightenment, which they themselves extinguished, they returned to their former faith. They especially believed that what they had sanctioned concerning baptism and justification were truths. But still, when they we were in enlightenment, they saw and from enlightened sight confessed that no no one has original sin from Ad, Adam, Adam, but from his own parents successively. And that this is not taken away by the imputation and application of the Lord's merit in baptism. Then that the imputation and Application of the Lord's merit is a human fiction, because impossible, and that faith is never infused into any tackling, because faith is of one who thinks. Yeah, I think, yeah, because we, in my understanding, it's like uh, salvation depends from understanding and from the state of mind, that because uh, maybe he means that, yeah? Yes, you have to believe on Christ. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, it depends from repentance. Yeah, because, but uh, infants c c c cannot repent. Yeah, because they understand nothing like, <laughs> like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still, they saw that baptism is holy and uh, sacrament because it is a sign and a mem mem memorial that man can be regenerated by the lord through truth from the word a sign of a sign for heaven and a memorial for man also that by it a man is introduced into the church as the sons of israel by the crossing of the jordan were introduced into the land of canaan and thus the inhabitants of Jerusalem were prepared for the reception of the Lord by the baptism of John. For without that sin in heaven before the angels, the Jews could not have subsisted and lived at the coming of Jehovah, that is, the Lord, in the flesh. Similar to this were the things which they sanctioned concerning justification that the imputation of the Lord's merit uh, neither is 
nor is given may be seen in the doctrine of the New Jerusalem concerning the Lord, and that hereditary, hereditary, hereditary evil, which is called original sin, is not from Adam, but from parents successively seen the angelic wisdom concerning the divine providence. What Adam means in the word, mm -hmm. uh -huh, see there, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, any comments? What, what do you think <laughs> uh, about this way of interpretation? Maybe about his I think it's really me. deep how much they talk about just one verse. You know, usually when I read a Bible commentary, they read like, you know, they go through sometimes one verse at a time, but sometimes a few verses, and then they talk about it a little bit. Like maybe one fifth of this, like, you know, much less than this. And then they'll move on to the next verse. But this is like going into each verse and going into so much detail. I think that's really good. It's like good quality. It's fascinating. And then the other thing I want to say is, um, I love the part where it lists, you know, the wood. It talks about wood and how from wood they make like things for idolatry. And I thought that was really good because they listed all the verses where people made wood and then they made idols. And that's really good, you know, to have. That way you can like read it for the Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox and show them how their wood and icons are like, you know, kind of very similar to what the Bible says not to do. You know, so that's funny. Like, that's good. Good quality there. Emmanuel, are you uh, you're a Christian, I assume? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, and uh, do you, cool. Do mm -hmm. you belong to a, a specific church? Uh, actually, I am a Swedenborgian, and Swedenborgian is is not like a denomination. It's like uh, people who who like to read books of Swedenborg. It's like the state of mind because a lot a lot of great people were influenced by books of Swedenborg. Mm, it's like they were Swedenborgians. For example, there are five of presidents of USA. There were Swedenborgians, and we can say that USA is established, uh, is founded on books of Swedenborgs. Really? Yeah. So it's a kind because of Protestant. It's a, for example, yeah, I mean, uh, but it's not like Protestant religion. It's like, it's uh, it's about... And just it's it's about how can we make the world a better place, uh, because uh, it's about building an ideal just society here on earth as it is in heaven. Because uh, when Jesus commanded us to pray about coming of God's kingdom to earth as it is in heaven, and it means that it is our responsibility to build that ideal just society. And um, for fathers of um, USA, understood that that. Because the Constitution of USA is founded on uh, this doctrine, like this doctrine in New Jerusalem. Because when James Madison, Ma James Madison, so he was uh, the father of Constitution of USA, and he he were he was influenced by the doctrine New Jerusalem from books of Swedenborg. But actually, a lot of philosophers, like idealist philosophers, were influenced books of Swedenborg. And they created a lot of teachings and doctrines from books of Swedenborg, like German idealist philosophers like Hegel, Kant, uh, and uh, another philosophers. <laughs> they read books of Swedenborg and they wrote their own doctrines from his books. Okay. And Karl Marx, for example, Karl Marx, he was a uh, disciple of uh, uh, Hegel and uh, are you talking about Marxism? Yeah, because uh, Karl Marx uh, took that idea from the Bible, Karl Marx, and, and he created that idea Marxism from the Bible, by biblical idea. But he threw out God from that idea, <laughs> and uh, to make that idea more popular. And uh, but th this is utopia to build the kingdom of God on earth without God. <laughs> but actually, yeah, I, I they, never uh, heard. Uh, I don't know what it is really. But like I'm so like you you said you're a Sweden uh, you 
like this you follow this guy um i don't know his name but uh um do you go to like a, a a church like a roman catholic church eastern orthodox church russian orthodox church protestant uh, church no, do you go to any church no no, no. but there are churches of swedenborgians in the world like cathedral churches but uh, a lot of people who like to read books of Swedenborg they don't belong to to churches and denominations it's like the state of mind yeah you know? if you agree with his point of view you can you can call yourself a swedenborgian because it, it is your understanding of the bible like this yeah i understand what you're saying oh. well, for example abraham lincoln uh, uh, was a swedenborgian and uh, jefferson and uh, franklin madison um, Calvin Coolidge, Roosevelt, uh, and it's like. <laughs> but have you looked uh, into like the? Uh, hmm? How about uh, have you looked into the early reformers of Christianity, like the, uh, you know, the Protestant reformers, John Calvin, Martin Luther? Have you looked into them? Yeah, and uh, they created. Uh, Martin Luther created doctrine about justification by faith alone. And, uh, but uh, it's like it is not impossible to be saved uh, and to be justified by faith alone without good works like this. Yeah, because we should have faith plus good works. Like, no, I, I, I disagree. I, I, I mean, go ahead, Rami. Well, I was, ju I was just gonna explain we believe that if you have true faith. Like, you believe in Christ, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, and then you're going to do works. Like, all Christians have works, but we're not saved by works, we're saved by faith alone. But if you have true faith, you're going to have true works. Like, works are evidence of faith, you know? That's kind of what we believe. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, but not only, but we cannot be saved only by faith alone, because, uh, yeah, because our good works follow from our faith. And if if our faith is separated from our good works, it means we have dead faith, like not, our faith is dead faith. Yeah, yeah I mean, go ahead, Juan. No, you go. I was just going to say, like, we're not saved by, by works, right? Because the Bible says that we're, we're saved by grace, and when you add, like, works onto it, it says that it's no longer grace, right? Read him the verse. Yeah, Get him yeah, the verse me... and read it. Now, you're right, Emmanuel, in the sense that faith will produce works, and that's that. those two things can never be separated. But then, let me give you the example. When you believe in Christ, okay, you have his righteousness, like you're made right with God, by the fact that Christ shed his blood on the cross for you and for me and, you know, for all the Christians. And so, you, you get it? Like, the righteousness of Christ is your righteousness because you have faith in what Christ did. Now, obviously, you love Christ, and so you're going to work for him. And you're going to do good works. But those good works are not, like, going to make you right with God. It's what Christ did on the cross that makes you right with God. Does that make sense? But then obviously you need to, 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 to have works because you have the Holy Spirit and, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to like work through you and, and help you. And, you know, like you, you, all Christians have works, but then at the same time, it's like, you understand? It's the whole idea that it's the righteousness of Christ that makes you right with God. Does that make sense? Right. So, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 6 is what I was talking about. Um, it says, and if it is by, well, I want, I mean, maybe we should read this whole chapter. I don't know, but, uh, it, I'll just read a verse prior. It says in the same way at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if it is by grace, then it is no longer by works. Otherwise grace would no longer be grace. You get it, Emmanuel? Like we don't deserve Christ dying for us. You know, like we don't deserve that. And so when we receive that, it's the grace of God. Like it's something that's undeserved. Grace is basically unmerited favor. Like we don't merit it. We don't deserve it. But God is, is generous and kind and loving. So he gives it to us anyways. And if it's like that, then you can't pay for that. It's not something you pay for with like good works. You get it? It's grace. 
and you want to honor God, basically, you know, because he Amen. gave you this. Amen. Yeah, like yeah, Rami he, said, he gave you this, right? The Bible says uh, faith is a gift from God. Yeah, and Jesus commanded us to love one another. Yeah, this is his commandment. And uh, But how can you love one another without doing good to each other? Yeah, because what does it mean, love one another? It, it means right. I understand it like if I love you, I want to do good to you <laughs> yeah because jesus yeah. washed feet of his disciples like this because but uh, servants <clears throat> must uh, wash feet uh, feet of uh, their masters but uh, jesus was servant to his disciples and it means that he did good to them yeah <laughs> absolutely, because in, absolutely. in the sense, yeah yeah, and we have to do mm -hmm. the same thing. Like he set the example for us, and and we have to watch wash each other's feet and do good. But that's all because we love God, and we want to, you know, like make Him happy. It's not because that's gonna cause us to go to heaven. You get it? Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. like, even yeah. even if you have like a lot of good works, that's not gonna make it so you can enter heaven. Because it's faith, like it's it's what Christ did for you on the cross, and it's the grace of God that makes it so you can go to heaven. And obviously, you you you're gonna work a lot and watch each other watch each other's feet, like Christ showed us, you know. Yeah, because uh, if you love uh, Jesus, we want to uh, do charity, yeah, and mercy to. Uh, uh, to his disciple, to his disciples, yeah, and like this because we are one, we are all a family, because we should understand who we are in Jesus Christ, because Jesus uh, died for uh, for uh, to bring us together, like to bring all children of God. Yeah, do you remember when Caiaphas, high priest, was prophesying about death of Jesus Christ? Uh, he, uh, John said that Jesus Christ must die for to gather all scattered children of god for to bring them together and to make them one and it means uh, that uh, after it happened after pentecost because after pentecost mm, the church had one heart and twelve one soul it it means that we the, the church became one person like this it means uh, if you understand that you are me and i am you i can love you because uh, we are we are all one body of Christ, and it means that uh, when I see you, I think that it is I myself in you, and Jesus lives in you, and it means that Jesus lives in me, and it it means that we have one heart and uh, heart and one soul. That because I think that your feet is not your own feet, but your feet is my feet, because like your body is my body, and your troubles are my troubles, your problems are my problems, because. We became one. Amen. <laughs> Actually, <Yeah. laughs> and uh, th this is the main, main, main motto of U.S. For example, appeared on the Great Seal. Uh, it says, "Out of many, one." And this is the main purpose and goal of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ wants to make us one, uh, to have one heart and one soul. And this uh, motto, motto, uh, based in the main. Mm, goal and purpose of U.S., for example, like a uh, manifestation of the kingdom of God, because for fathers to wanted to uh, build an ideal just society in, in, in the USA, that because they created that constitution and uh, James Madison, uh, for example, James Madison <coughs> said, uh, he said, this is his quote, he said, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. See, he, he said, because it, it is from doc, uh, doctrine of New Jerusalem, because if, if we are non-angels, we need to have government to rule over us. Uh, but if we are angels like this, he said, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. It means if we are non-angels, non, non we need to have someone to rule over us. But if we are angels, it means we became one, and we have no need to have gov government to rule over us. Because uh, government is not like like about ruling, yeah, it's about like uh, serving 
in this sense. Understand? Because if we are servants, it means if we are in government, it means we want to serve our society like this. We want to do good to them in this sense. But because we are ministers and presidents and servants in this sense. And that because Jesus washed feet of his disciples, he wanted to explain that them that I am your servant. I came to serve you. <laughs> it means it, that because he's our uh, Lord. I would he, just he, be careful. Mm-hmm with like saying that you're saved by like faith and works right because like it doesn't say that you're saved by works i mean because like this is the problem if you say that you're saved by works then like i assume the works would be like following the commandments and such right and the, the standard of the law is perfection and only christ met that standard of the of you know the law he was perfection he only he fulfilled the law no man has fulfilled the law yeah, but christ Right. So we see that, you know, we cannot even fulfill our works. Like Christ I don't did. mean by to be saved to be saved by works alone. I mean we we are saved by faith plus good works. Because faith plus charity for like faith, because <clears throat> we, we should have because faith is is about truth. I mean faith corresponds to the truth, but g- good works I correspond to mercy because God is a merciful God. Uh, it's not about only the truth, but it is about mercy and charity of God, because m- m- mercy of God is about then truth. Yeah, because because for, for example, when uh, Jews uh, were waiting for the sec- for the coming of the Messiah, and when the Messiah came to them, they did not recognize him because they didn't understand the spirit of the law. Because uh, Jesus was teaching about the spirit of the law, and the spirit of the law is about mercy. But Jews uh, knew scriptures very well, but they could not understand the spirit of the law. That because they killed the, the truth, because Jesus is the truth. And it means that when the truth came to the Jews, Jews didn't uh, understand the truth. That because by killing Jesus, they thought that they were doing good, God's will by killing him. Because Concerning the law of Moses, no one can make himself equal with God. But they thought that Jesus uh, did that, that because concerning the law of Moses, they thought that Jesus must be put to death. But actually, they didn't understand the spirit of the law in this sense. But because the spirit of the, of the law is about mercy, I mean, mercy is about good works. For example, that uh, <clears throat> that story about good Samaritan, yeah, he did good works to that man uh, yeah, uh, and on the road. And it means uh, we can be saved our good works, yeah, because it's about charity, not only by the faith alone. Would you agree? Yeah, because if you, if you, think, if you think that if you say that I believe in Jesus Christ and I automatic, automatically saved by these words I said, yeah. it is not like real faith, yeah? Mm. Read, uh, what is it, Ephesians 2.8? Oh, Ephesians? No, 2.8. Read it, it says, uh, Ephesians 2.8 mm. says, for uh, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. Amen. You get it? Like, like, it's by grace through faith, not, our, not of ourselves, not of works, but we are created to do good works. So it's like we're meant to do this, these good works and God has prepared these good works for us. But at the same time, we're saved um, by like grace. Uh, yeah, exactly. And like you, you're expected to do good works because, you know, God has prepared these good works for you and he's empowering you to do them. So like, yes, you're going to do good works, obviously, but... Uh, the salvation is by grace through faith and not of ourselves. 
does that make sense, Emmanuel? It's like a biblical thing. Yeah. You have to understand mm-hmm. the forgiveness of God through Christ. You can never earn that by works. But if you have that, you're going to have works as proof of your salvation. You know, like if someone says they have faith, but then they don't have works, we're going to say to them, your faith is dead because it's not producing good works. You know, it's like you said earlier, but then a living faith will produce works. Okay. Right. So, for example, like, uh, I mean, I'll read some some more scripture here in Ephesians 1 verse 11. It says, in him, we were also chosen as God's own, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything by the counsel of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be for the praise of his glory. So. Uh, And it also says, And in him, having heard and believed the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the pledge of our inheritance, until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. So, like, this ties into Ephesians 2, where, like, it's saying that God foreknew, right, uh, out of his plan for us that we would do good works, right? Uh, We're not being saved by these good works because he saved us. Uh, according to the riches of his grace, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we're supposed to do good works because we love God and because we love exactly. you know, the body of like the body of Christ. And that's us. You said remember Emmanuel, you said one one body, like we're all the same. We're the body of Christ. We're the church. And obviously we love each other and we're called to even love our enemies and love them that persecute us. We even were, were called to love them. That's a good work. But we can do that because, you know, God loved us first and he gave us the Holy Spirit and he empowers us. And, you know, like in him and through him, we can do all these good works. But remember, the works don't make you right with God. They're only evidence. They're like proof that you're right with God, you know. Yeah, in, in scripture, you know, we can find another verse. Um Somewhere it states, I have a righteousness that is not of my own. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Rami? Yeah, I can, I can try to dig that verse up. I'm not even sure where it is. Here, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. And be found... Uh, wait, hold on. Let me pull up the whole chapter here. This is interesting. <laughs> Um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. I'm going to read 7. Let's see. But whatever was gained to me, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things as loss compared to the surpassing excellence of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God on the basis of faith. So we see that, you know, we don't we don't have a, a righteousness from our own. The righteousness is from God on the basis of faith that he gifted us. Uh, and uh, this is a question then. If, so, for example, if someone has faith in Jesus Christ and he is baptized and he confessed his faith, but if he or she doesn't do good deeds and doesn't do charity and mercy, uh, is, is he or she saved or not? What do you think? Well, uh, they get baptized and then what happens? You said they don't have works? Is that what you said? Yeah, he said they don't yeah. have good works. He said yeah, they well, believe in Jesus Christ, they were baptized, but they don't have good works. So here's how I would approach that, Emmanuel. There's two perspectives. From my perspective as a person, I would say no. Because I don't see good works. Even if I see a faith confession, I have to test the spirits. And Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. So if I come and I test the spirit and I find bad works and I don't find good works, then I'm going to be like, well, this person doesn't have faith, right? Because, you know, you will know them by their, by their fruit. And if I look at the fruit and it's all garbage and they don't have good fruit, well, I can't assume that they have faith. 
you know, I'm going to say, no, this is wrong. And I'm not going to encourage them. I'm going to be like, hey, you need to change. You need to to stop this, this and this. And you need to start doing this, this and this, you know, like I'm going to rebuke them if I don't see good works and if I see bad works, even if they say they have faith, right? But from God's perspective, God knows the heart of the person. And may like it's ultimately it's between them and God. And if they have good works in front of God, even if I don't see it, maybe they're saved. Like you get it? Like like God knows if they have good works. For us as humans, if we don't see good works, then we should never assume they're saved because you know we have the biblical idea that you're you know you're you're you, you, we shall know them by their fruit and we're so you know we're supposed to be able to test the spirits right like this is an idea that's kind of important so you get it people that have faith confessions but no works we're gonna basically deny their faith confession because we're gonna tell them well jesus said you will know them by their fruit and i i can't like your fruit seems very evil i don't see good works so i can't assume you're saved but like i guess the last example i'll give is Maybe there's someone that's an alcoholic and they say they believe in Christ, whatever. Maybe, just maybe, now they seem really bad and they seem like they don't have a lot of good works. But maybe they're improving slowly, you know? Maybe God is, like, helping them improve. And in five or ten years, they're, they're going to not be an alcoholic and then they're going to have, like, good works. You see what I mean? Like, like, maybe even if I don't see it now... Maybe they're improving and God is going to help them and they're going to be saved eventually. Like, like, you know, they're, they're going to like be able to produce fruit, but maybe also they're, they're not right. You see what I mean? Like, we don't know ultimately it's between them and God, but what we do know is that people who have faith should have works accompanying them. Does that make sense, Emmanuel? Yeah, mm -hmm. because we can say that that's not real faith. Yeah, you can say that they, they believe that that is real faith but uh, in the view of god that's not real faith yeah because if you don't correspond that um, faith of god yeah because if yeah. you don't uh, do goods the book of james says that you know people uh, the demons also believe and tremble like there's a kind of faith where it's like they believe and they know God is there, but then they're not saved necessarily. Like, you know, the demons believe in God and they're not saved. And there's that kind of faith that doesn't save people. It's like the demon's faith. But the true faith will always mm -hmm. produce works. And that saves, you know. It's not the works that save is the faith, but works are the necessary entailment, you know. Like, like true faith entails true works. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm agree. Yeah. Just keep thinking about it and pray about it. You know, pray to God about what we're telling you and keep reading the scriptures and stuff like that. I think that's you know, like that's gonna it's gonna keep helping you. And you know. I I, I yeah. I understand the idea uh, that like you don't wanna have mm -hmm. faith without works, because that would be a dead faith. But then remember, what makes you right before God is your faith, and your faith always is going to produce works, you know. That's basically what we mm -hmm. believe, in, you know. That's, that's basically the biblical teaching, too. It's like in the Bible, you know. Mm -hmm. Remember? Uh, yeah. what, do think, my, 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 what do you think? Maybe um, we, we can continue. Maybe someone wants to continue. We can read verse by verse and uh, to, to, to try to understand uh, his point of view. What do you think? Or maybe... Yeah, I mean, you want to keep reading? Maybe, keep going. It was, it was pretty my, cool. Maybe, maybe someone wants, can, can, can read next verse, uh, verse 13. I mean, maybe because I, I was reading verse 12. Maybe someone wants to read next verse 13. And, or I, I can read. But mm -hmm. if nobody wants to read, I can read. <laughs> Maybe someone wants to read. It is good to read together because uh, um, it's more interesting, I think. Yeah. Maybe you can read next. Okay, I'll read a little Jeremy. bit. I don't. I'm, I don't promise I'm gonna read the whole mm -hmm. chapter, but I'll try reading a little at least. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. And. Yes. <laughs> 
and cinnamon and incense and ointment and frankincense signifies that they no longer have worship from spiritual goods and truth because they have nothing within their worship which corresponds to the things here mm -hmm. named in the for, uh, foregoing verse it treats all the things that are of the doctrine of the church but in this verse it treats of all the things which are of the worship of the church the things which are of doctrine are premised and those which are of worship keep going yeah follow because this quality of the worship is from the goods and truths of doctrine, for worship is nothing but an external act, in which there should be the internals which are of doctrine. Without these, the worship is without its essence, uh, its essence, life and soul. Now, because all the things which are of doctrine have revelation to the goods which Re wait, wait, relation. Have relation, yeah have relation to the goods which are of love and charity and to the truths which are of wisdom and faith these goods and truths according to the degree of their order are celestial spiritual and natural so also are all the things of worship and because in the preceding verse the spiritual things of doctrine are mentioned first so likewise here are the spiritual things of worship which are cinnamon and sense ointment and frankincense and the celestial things of worship are not named in the second place which are wine oil fun flour and wheat and the uh, Natural things of worship are named in the third place, which are beasts of burden and sheep. That all these goods and truths of worship should be from the word is signified by their being of horses, of chariots, of the bodies, and of the souls of men. This is the series of the things in spiritual sense in this verse. But by all those things which are enumerated in this verse, the like is, meant, is meant as by those that are enumerated in the press, preceding, preceding verse. That is that these goods and truths are not with them because they, are, they have not with themselves such things as correspond to them. This is evident from what precedes where are these words that the city of babylon should be burnt up with fire and no one should buy her merchandise anymore verse 8 to 11 and from those which follow where are these words that all thing all things fat and splendid had departed from her and were not found anymore verse 14 and that these were devastated verse 16 19 but something shall now be said of the things that have been mentioned which are cinnamon incense ointment and frankincense these are mentioned because they are such things as incense uh, was made of that the worship of the Lord from spiritual goods and truth, truths is signified by incense may be seen above. And that incense was pleasing because it was from fragrant things which correspond. All the fragrant things by which it was prepared are meant by the cinnamon incense and ointment and they're es essential by the frankincense this is manifest from the enumeration of the spices of which it was compounded in moses jehovah said unto moses take to the spices They, wait, what is that word? Stacked? Uh, spices, st staked. Maybe it's like uh, any kind of spice, yeah? Yeah, it's probably a type uh, of spice. Stacked. Stacked. Mm, okay, stacked. stacked onica <laughs> and gal, gal, galbanum and pure frankincense. 
And thou shalt it make of. It's probably just different kinds of incense. You know, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make of them incense and ointment, the work of a perfumer, uh, salted, pure, holy. Exodus 30, 34 to 37. Of these, the incense was made by which was said, worship from spiritual goods and truths was signified. Cinnamon is mentioned here in place of all the spices there, but what each of those spices signifies in the spiritual sense may be seen in Arca Kulista. Ah, Arcana Calestia, it's from Latin, it's like his other book, mm -hmm. another book. Okay, okay, okay. From mm -hmm. Calestia, upon Exodus, where they are severely explained, severally explained. And wine and oil and fine flour and wheat signifies that they no longer have worship from celestial tr truths and goods because they have not within... Uh, in the worship, the things which correspond to the things above mentioned. These things are similar to those which have been said just above and before, with the difference only that celestial goods and truths are here signified. What goods and truths are called celestial and what spiritual may be seen above, and that as they have not s these neither are they in their worship for as was said above the goods and truths of doctrine are in worship as the soul is in the body wherefore worship without them is inanimate worship such is worship which is holy in externals in which these is not an any holy internal that wine signifies truth from the goods of love may be seen above that oil signifies the good of love will be seen in the following paragraph by fine flour it signifies <laughs> celestial truth and by wheat a signi signified celestial good that the truth and goods of worship are signified by wine oil fine flour and wheat is because the drink offering and me meal offering consist consisted of them which were offered upon the altar together with the sacrifices, and by the sacrifices and by the offerings offered upon the altar, worship is signified for the chief part of worship consisted in them, that the drink offerings, which were wine, were offered upon the altar together with the sacrifices may be seen, Exodus 24, 29, 40, Levit uh, Leviticus 23, 12 and 13, 18, 19, Numbers 15, 2 to 15, 28, 11 to 15, 18, 31, 29, 1 to 7, and also in Isaiah 57, 6, 65, 11, Jeremiah 7, 18, 44, 79, Ezekiel 20, 28, Joel 1, 9, Psalm 16, 4, Deuteronomy 32, 38. That oil was offered upon the altar together with the sacrifices, Exodus 29, 40, Numbers 15, 2 to 15, 28, that the meal offering... Uh, which were a fine flour of wheat were offered okay. upon the altar together with the sacrifices. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, Exodus Is 29 40. Else? Well, I'm reading the uh, a thing real quick. We can talk, comment on it right after if you want. No. Is there any females in this voice chat though? No. Well, not right now, but pretty soon if you want if you want to talk about something we can start a topic i'm just you know i'm just gonna help him read this and then we'll talk i guess uh let's see mm -hmm. ne next page yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. is it kill yeah Joel, I like it. Love <laughs> okay i'll keep going uh you know i'll skip all the verses the bread the bread of faces of the showbread upon the table in the tabernacle was also made of fine flour of wheat. Leviticus 23, 17, 24, 5 to 9. It may be seen from this that these four things, wine, oil, fine flour, and wheat, were holy and celestial things of worship. Since oil is here mentioned among the holy things of worship. And... Other people in Discord think I'm crazy. Do you think I'm crazy? I don't think you're crazy. Uh, and 
signifies celestial goods. Something shall be said here of the oil of the ointment anointing which was in use among the ancients and was afterwards commanded uh, uh, to the sons of israel that in ancient times the anointed stones set up as statues is manifest from genesis 28 19 18 to 19 22 that they also anointed Warlike arms, shields, and bucklers. Two Samuel one twenty one, Isaiah twenty one five. Mm -hmm. That is that it was commanded that they should prepare oil for holiness, with which they should anoint all the holy things of the church. That which that with it they anointed the altar and all its vessels, also the tabernacle and all things in it. Exodus. 30, 22, 33, 40, 9 to 11, Leviticus 8, 10 to 12, Numbers 7, 1. That they anointed with it those, uh, those who should perform the function of the priesthood and their garments. Exodus 29, 7, 29, 30, 30, 40, 13 to 15, Leviticus 8, 12, Psalms 3, 133, 1 to 3. That with it they anointed the prophets. First uh, Kings nineteen fifteen to sixteen. That they anointed the kings with it, and therefore the kings were called the anointed of Jehovah. For I'm skipping all these verses. Okay, I'm, anointing with oil of holiness was commended because oil signified the good of love and represented the lord who as to his human is the very and the only anointed of jehovah anointed not with oil but with the divine good itself of the divine love wherefore also he was called the messiah in the old testament and the christ in the new testament uh, John 1 41 4 25 and Messiah and Christ signify anointed hence it is that the priests the kings and the things of the church were anointed and when anointed were called holy not that they were holy in themselves but because they thereby represented the Lord as the divine human hence it was sacrilege to harm a king because he was the anointed of Jehovah. First Samuel 24 6 and then I'm skipping all the verses. Moreover it was received custom to anoint themselves and others to testify gladness and benevolence of mind but with common oil or some other noble oil but not with the oil of holiness. Uh, I'm skipping all the verses that it was not permitted to anoint themselves or others with the oil of holiness. And beasts of burden and sheep signifies that they no longer have worship from the external or natural goods and truths of the church, but because they have not anything within their worship which corresponds to the above mentioned things. This is similar to the things explained above, with the difference that there are signified spiritual goods and truths and celestial goods and truths but here natural goods and truths for the distinction between which see above by beasts of burden okay i'm so tired bro keep going you keep going i read a lot <laughs> who wants to can thank you your reading is very good who maybe someone wants to continue next Mm -hmm. Sorry, bro. Okay. I'm reading currently. I, 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 I like reading. I like reading. Yeah. Do you want to yeah, read? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'll read. Okay. Watch the stream and keep going. From where? 781? Uh, uh, sheep. Well, yeah. Just start at the big. At the... Maybe you can finish this and the next person can read. Maybe. Okay, okay, or... okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll finish it. Sheep are signified the sacrifices which were made with oxen, bullocks, he goats, sheep, kids, rams, uh, she goats, lambs, oxen, and bullocks are meant by beasts of burden, and kids, rams, she goats, lambs, by sheep, and sacrifices were the external of worship. 
which are also called the natural things of worship. And the horses and carriages and the bodies and souls of men that signified all signifies all those things according to the understanding of the word and doctrine that and according to the goods and truths of the sense of its letter, which they have not because they falsely and and adulterate falsify and adulterate the word by applying the things which are therein to dominion over heaven and the world, contrary to its genuine sense. These things are named in the possessive case because they qualify those which proceed that the under the understanding of the word is signified by horses may be seen. 298. That by chariots, doctrine from the word is signified. 437. Hence, the like by carriages, that the goods and truths of the sense of the letter of the word are signified by the bodies and souls of men. It's because similar things are signified by them as by the body and blood in the Holy Supper. By the body in the Holy Supper is signified the Lord's divine good. And by the blood of the Lord's divine truth, um, by the blood of the Lord's divine truth. And because they signify these, they also signify the divine good and the divine truth of the word, because the Lord is the word. But here is it, it is said the soul instead of blood. The reason is that truth is likewise, likewise signified by the soul above 681 and because the blood is called the soul in the word genesis 9 4 through 5 leviticus 17 12 through 14 and deuteronomy 12 23 to 25 the like is signified by the soul of man ezekiel 27 13 also by the seed of man daniel 2 43 um Similar things are signified by horses and carriages in Isaiah. Then shall they bring all your brethren upon horses and upon chariots and upon carriages and upon mules and upon co-horsers unto the mountain of my holiness, Jerusalem. Isaiah 66, 20. This is said of the Lord's new church, which is Jerusalem, concerning those therein who are in the understanding of the word and in doctrine thence, which are horses, chariots, and carriages. Now, because they who are of the Roman Catholic religious persuasion falsify and adulterate the word, by the application to dominion over heaven and the world, it is signified that they have no good and truths from the word, and therefore neither in their doctrine. Concerning this, Jeremiah says, The king of Babel hath devoured me, he hath disturbed me, he hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up as a whale. He hath filled his belly with my delicacies. Jeremiah 51, 34. A sword is against the horses of Babel and against his chariots and against his treasures that they may be pillaged. Drought is upon her. Uh, wa waters that they may be dried up because it is a land of gra graven images and they glory in their terrible things. Jeremiah 50, 37 to 38. That's really insightful, actually. Thanks for sharing that with me. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Uh, it's really, it's would you really agree? insightful. I mean, I'm Catholic, so I disagree that the Catholic, but the points about the, <laughs> the significations and stuff and like how that plays ties into like, it's basically like he's, they're saying like that the, the, the truth of the Lord is going against the falsity of the system of the Babel. And that's really cool, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I think that, um, um, I mean, like uh, when Emperor of Rome, Constantine, uh, created that Nicaea Council, he established that uh, religious doctrine about uh, uh, trinity of persons and about ju justification by faith alone. And we should understand how it was, because Emperor of Rome was a pagan, and he he believed in in a lot of gods, but uh, that because the and uh, the main uh, mo motto of uh, Rome was divide and rule, and by creating and that because um, Constantine was ruling over that Nicaea Council, 
and he uh, he brought the doc that uh, idea about uh, several gods into Christianity, and uh, uh, they created the doctrine about Trinity of Persons, and it means that they separated faith from charity, and uh, that because he created that because he was a pagan and uh, he understood that if he divide God's church uh, between three persons of God, he can rule over God's church in this sense. And uh, Catholic religion uh, followed from that Nicaea Creed. It means that um, we can say that Emperor of Rome, Constantine, was a father of the doctrine. And uh, modern Christian world worshipped to the doctrine uh, created by Emperor of Rome, Constantine. I mean, I wouldn't, because... look, I would say mm -hmm. you should, you know, personally, I've looked into it and like, I want to say the first, uh, the idea of the Trinity is more from the Bible and, you know, the apostles and Christ. Like, they worshipped Christ and things like that. So, you know, like, the Holy Spirit is like God, you know, we can see that. Even in the book here we read, like, it seems like Emmanuel, uh, you know, Swedenborg, said that Christ is the divine person. You know, he's like a divine mm -hmm. person, right? We read that earlier, right? And so he uh -huh, seems to yeah. agree with this idea too, that like Christ is, you know, divine. And um, uh, Constantine couldn't really decide what was going to happen at the council because there was like bishops, you know, like the the church elders, like the, the you know, the people that like basically Christ and the apostles chose for to be rulers of the church, you know, they're the ones who are deciding things. And if Constantine tries to tell them what to believe, they're going to get, like, really angry with him, especially if it's paganism, you know. But, like, they can't tell the church clergy what they should believe. I don't care if he's the emperor, you know. He can't tell us what we should believe. But I would say there are definitely things that over the years were became bad with the, with the church, you know. And I'm not going to say, like, the church is perfect or anything like that. But, I, I, like, I wouldn't say that the Trinity is pagan or it came from Constantine. It was more, like, from the Bible and from what the people believed at the time. And if they didn't believe that and Constantine tried to make them believe that, they would have been very angry. You see what I mean? They wouldn't be like, yeah, it's okay. We're just going to compromise the Christian faith to make the emperor happy. They would be like, no, we're going to die for the true Christian faith, right? You see what I mean? And anyways, that's basically my view. Try to look into it. Like, look into con uh, the Nicaea and what happened and, like, who was in control and stuff, you know? Uh, Emperor of Rome appointed that elders of, uh, like, bishops uh, and uh, popes of uh, Catholic Church, and it means he was a ruler because he was an uh, emperor, and it's like uh, he... Uh, Appointed that uh, uh, he called the pope. council. You're right in that, mm -hmm. but he didn't choose who the bishops were. The bishops were the people that were ordained bishop, like you know, they were ordained like elders in the churches already. You get it? Like, like imagine there's the emperor that calls the council, and he did do that because there was a lot of conflict over the you know, like is Christ God? Is the Holy Spirit God? You know, like there was a lot of conflict in the church. So he called the council about it. And then all the bishops that he didn't choose showed up at the council. And then they held like the, the council and they like argued together to see what they were going to choose as, you know, like to keep going. And so like you get it, like he didn't decide who the elders were. He didn't decide what the elders chose, but he did decide to call the council, you know. And anyways, like I, if the Trinity was pagan, I would have a big problem with it, but I think it's biblical and I, you know, I think you can like, you can look at the early Christians and they all believe this, you know, like the people around Paul and James and Matthew and Luke, Luke and Mark and John, all these guys believed in the divinity of Christ. And that's why we believe that, you know? Yeah, but I, I mean that we can say that if you believe in Trinity of Persons, this is a wrong 
uh, believe in. But if you believe in trinity of person, like do you understand the difference between trinity of persons and trinity of person? Like trinity of one person. <laughs> because yeah. if you if you, if you think about three persons of God, it means that we be, within our mind we believe in three gods. And this is a paganism, like polytheism. Yeah, I see what you but mean, but it's one essence, one divine essence. So it's one God in three persons. I know it seems like it's polytheism, but it's really not. It's only one God with one essence. And you could imagine it this way. The Father is the eternal Father. The Word of God is Jesus Christ, and the love between the Father and His Word is the Holy Spirit. That's like one God, His triune, okay? Like, try to give it a chance, at least. Pray to God about it. Like, you know, I know you're not going to change your mind right now. I don't expect you to, but pray to God about it. Ask Him if it's true. Ask Him to guide you, and, you know, keep reading the Bible and stuff like that. I think, you know, like you're... God is going to show you the truth, right? Like, you believe this, too. Yeah, because, you know, Israel believed in one and only one God. And this is a simple question. For example, do you believe that... Uh, yeah, do you believe in the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God yes. of Moses? Mm -hmm. And do you believe that Jesus Christ is the God of... Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Mo Jacob, the God of Moses, and uh, Jesus Christ appeared to Moses as a burning bush. Yeah, exactly. Jesus is the one that appeared there. He also appeared to Abraham, if you remember, when Sodom and Gomorrah were going to get destroyed. The Lord appeared there, you know, Yahweh. He appeared to Moses. And remember, they were like at the tent. There were three... Um, there were three angels there with Abraham, and um, one of them was the Lord, you know. And two of the angels went to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and then one of them stayed, and that was the Lord. And, God, and you know, Abraham was like pleading with him, if there are 50 righteous in the city, will you destroy the city? Remember that? That was Abraham talking mm -hmm. with God, but obviously God is there on earth with him. But then we also know that, you know, the Heavenly Father, no one can has seen him. So you, you get it? Like we, you know, it's kind of like a divine mystery. You have to realize this, Emmanuel. Like, like for us, God is beyond human understanding. There's a divine mystery aspect to it. And, you know, like we can't fully comprehend God, but we trust him the way he's revealed himself to us. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, uh, if yeah, if if you believe that uh, that was the same Jesus Christ who appeared to Moses, it means you believe that God is one is all, one and only one God, like one person, yeah. Because uh, and it, you can say that Jesus, Jehovah Himself, manifested in flesh, yeah. Because uh, God plus God is spirit, and spirit plus flesh is uh, human, and so that human is Jesus Christ, like divine human. Yeah, well, I do you can think say that Jesus that's, that's the same God. Mm. I do think Jesus is Jehovah, but at the same time, when Jesus was here on earth, he was like praying to the Father, you know, and he said like, Father, glorify thou me with the glory which I had with thee before the world was made, you know, and things like that. Like Christ is asking the Father to give him the, to share the glory with him that he had before the world was made. So you get it? You know, there's a lot of verses that make us believe that Christ is praying to the Father, that he's not the Father. Like, there's the Father, and then there's Christ, but they're one one God, one essence. I know it seems really wild, Emmanuel, and it's not something we can, like, comprehend with logic, but that, it, like, it seems to be, like, what the Bible teaches, and what the early church also teaches. You know, like, look into it. Don't believe me, but look into it, okay? Yeah, because we can say that mm, he, Jesus was saying from his humanity into his uh, divinity like this because and his divinity is uh, uh, he called his divinity as father as his father because his father is not like any different person from him yeah because father is not about um, 
<coughs> another person because it's about teaching uh, it's about doctrine because in spiritual sense father is is not uh, about flesh and uh, physical things because uh, bible is a spiritual book and we should understand father in spiritual sense because if you say father uh, you don't mean biological father yeah because we, we should understand the meaning of father what it means but is it about uh, what is it about biological father or not Be because god is spirit and jesus wasn't wasn't praying to his biological father yeah it means it's not about that but we should explain what it means to whom jesus was praying yeah i mean to, it's yeah? a spiritual truth but i do think christ was praying to the father in heaven but at the same time that you know he was the word made flesh like in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so you know we get this idea that like christ is with god but at the same time christ is god and he's the word of god made flesh you know yeah because he, jesus was when jesus came uh, in flesh he was limited by his humanity uh, but after after his crucifying and resurrection uh, it mean, uh, his his humanity became his divinity <laughs> uh, it means uh, he became father because father is, uh, is is not about biological father but it's about children and children because every father has his children and children of jesus christ are his disciples because the father is not about uh, biological children and father but it's about teaching because uh, hebrew called father uh, those who have uh, his dis disciples and uh, <clears throat> it's about church because when because jesus called his disciples children but some of his disciples were older than jesus but he called them children and uh, it means that he uh, was their father because father is about teaching because he who teaches us he's our father <laughs> because he's our teacher <laughs> don't send that because uh, i mean <clears throat> for for example do you remember joseph um he, he was we read that joseph was made father to pharaoh to pharaoh when he was in egypt he was made father to pharaoh but uh, joseph wasn't i mean pharaoh wasn't biological father no joseph wasn't biological father to pharaoh but he was the father of pharaoh in this sense because father is about teaching but but when but when we read father in bible in the literal sense we think about any different person but it's not about person it's about teaching in this sense do you understand what i mean yeah i mean yeah obviously i mean i've heard i've heard this before but Look, I'll encourage you to keep looking into it and look at what the early church said. Like, don't look, don't look at me or what later people said, you know, like, or, like, don't believe any of us, but read some of the early church fathers. Like, like, um, Tertullian in the year 200 was the first one to use the word Trinity. And, um, you know, he described Christ uh, about God as being triune. And, you know, that was before the Council of Nicaea. So, you know, like some, uh, and you can see where a lot of the early church fathers called Jesus God and how, you know, they had this idea that he wasn't the, the same person as the father and, you know, stuff like that. But look, I think, I think it's a source of confusion for a lot of people and I understand why, but like you keep an open mind and keep studying this and, you know, I think God is going to reveal it to you. Just, just you know consider personally i'm a trinitarian but i don't think it's paganism i think it's what the bible teaches and part of like you know what christ and the apostles taught okay yeah i mean trinity is not swedenborg believe believes in trinity too swedenborg swedenborgians believe in trinity but we believe in trinity of one person of god but you, because the, we can say that the whole trinity is in jesus christ because jesus is the father and he is uh, the son and he is uh, the holy spirit and, and this is the, the same god because it's like monotheism i mean there are three monotheistic 
uh, Abrahamic religions in the world, like uh, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. It means Christianity is a, a monotheistic religion too. That because uh, Islam, uh, Muslims are very angry and laugh, they laugh uh, at Christians uh, when Christians uh, say about Trinity of Persons, <laughs> because. Uh, Muslims understand that there is one and only one God, and Jews un understand that there is one and only one God. And God said, "Listen, Israel, God is only one God." And uh, but if you think about three persons of God, it means that we separated God between three gods. It means it means we believe in. We, I mean, when we pray to God, when you when you pray to God, to whom do you pray? And within your mind, do you think about? Three gods, or do you think about one god? Do you pray to one god, or do you pray to one of three? Uh, I, this is what mm -hmm. I definitely so pray, pray to pray? one god, but I would say I pray to the one true god that's uh, the Father in the name of the Son through the Holy Spirit. And you know, like to me, it's one god, one divine mm -hmm. essence, and he's triune. And it, it is like somewhat beyond human comprehension, but to me, it's still obviously one God. Like, I don't believe in three gods or anything like that. I, I, that would be heresy, you know? Yeah, because we can say that God is the owner of the titles, like uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They, uh, they are titles of God. And uh, God, Jesus Christ, is the owner of that three titles. Mm, would you agree? Because and when we, because the first church baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but after that Nicaea Council and Nicaea Creed, uh, the, uh, the the church like uh, became created in Father in the name of in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It means they um, they. Did it understood? Understood? Uh, they didn't understand who Jesus is, because the first church baptized in Jesus Christ, and we read in the book of Acts that uh, they were baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. But later <laughs> they baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you see? It means that God uh, became separated in their minds, and it means uh, they. It, it, it is not about salvation because we can be saved only by the name of Jesus Christ, it, and it it comes to us through a revelation who Jesus is. If you don't understand that Jesus is God Himself, it means we can be saved because uh, only on based on that confession that you believe that Jesus is Christ and He's God Himself, God Almighty, we can be saved. That because we can we can be saved only by name of Jesus Christ. And we, but if you baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it means uh, we are baptized in the titles. <laughs> but it's not about name because uh, it's about titles. I mean, the reason we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit is because that's what Jesus said in, you know, the Gospels, right? He said, "Go ye therefore and." make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Like, we do that because it was commanded to us to do it this way by, you know, Christ himself. Yeah, but uh, what, what, what do you think? Why the first church baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and, disciple, and disciples of Jesus Christ baptized and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Because it's like any different kind of baptizing, yeah. Because you, you should you should confess by your mouth that I am baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, like this, like this. And you understand that if you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, it means you receive His name and you became a Christian. Because um, it's like to be to become one family. Because if you are one of family, we have the the same name of our uh, husband. And God says, in that day, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. Because uh, salvation is about marriage. It's it, it, Because a new covenant is a covenant of marriage. Because God wants to be our husband. But if, 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 if you think that we are only the bride of Christ, 
But what about father? Does father has his own bride or wife? What do you think? And what about future? And about wedding? Who will have his own wife on that marriage and wedding? Is it about Jesus? Yeah, do you think that Jesus is only our bridegroom? But what about father? Is father without wife or will be father without wife? Or father and Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit will have the same wife? It's uh, mm. a good question. I I would say we are definitely the bride of Christ. And the father is offering us to Christ as the perfect bride. Um in the Holy Spirit, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Now, um, I think it, it's like the the Godhead is pleased that we... Like, it's basically a metaphorical uh, saying. You know, it's not a literal saying that, like, you know, like, we're... It's like to make us... It's like something we're used to, to understand how we're united to Christ. And, you know, it's like a sacred thing. It's like marriage. And we become you know, like, um, one with Christ through, you know, like, uh, basically receiving the Holy Spirit and being one with him. But it's more like of a metaphor than a literal thing. And, you know, like, the Father obviously doesn't have a wife, and the Holy Spirit also, I mean, doesn't have a wife. But in the same sense, we're married to the Godhead. We're married to God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. And it's more like a metaphor, I, I guess. That's how I would explain it. Of course, everything is metaphorical because it's about the law of God. Because it means that we understand that we can be, be united with God without that marriage. Yeah, because if we are only the bride of Christ, it means we we are not united with him. And uh, I, I mean, if we are, uh, if we are only bride of Christ and if you understand that Jesus Christ is uh, only our bridegroom right now, it means that we are not united with him. Yeah, because a bride cannot be united with her bridegroom without marriage, because it's 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 it's, it's uh, illegitimate yeah, to be united uh, outside of marriage. And it means uh, that this love, like love between bride and bridegroom, is not real love. It's like an illusion. Because only conjugal love, like mutual love, is real love. And this is love in marriage. Because after marriage, two became one. And after that marriage, we can bear fruit to God. And our children will be legitimate children of God. Because our children are our seeds. And it's about teaching. That because when, uh, because Mary, the Virgin Mary sy- sy- symbolizes uh, God's church. And uh, we can say that in this sense, Mary became the wife of God because uh, Jesus was born inside of marriage. Jesus wasn't born, wasn't born outside of marriage because Jesus is a legitimate child of God. It means uh, that how was Jesus born? We should understand that because when the angel Gabriel came down and said God's words to Mary, and Mary believed in God's words. She accepted that God's words, like God's teaching. And she said, let it happen to me. It means in that moment, she became the wife of God. In spiritual sense, of course. <laughs> because God is spirit. And it's about spiritual conjunction. And it means they became the wife of God, and they became one with God. And she got that marriage. And Jesus was born from the belief of Mary, because Mary believed in God's words and she ex- accepted them. Because we can be united with God only uh, by understanding that God is the word. That because the next word of Jesus Christ, the next name of Jesus Christ is the word of God. If we don't understand that God is the word, and if you think only about Jesus Christ, we cannot be united with them, because Jesus is a living word of God, in this sense. And, uh, 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 and because we can have that marriage between 
us and the word of God, because we can be united with the word of God. And we, when we became one of God, we can bear much fruit to God. But without that conjunction, we cannot bear fruit to God, because we are we are not God's wife. In this sense, <laughs> then, uh, does it make sense? Uh, don't understand what I mean because it's about uh, uh, because it's about we can say that Bible is a um, legal book. It's about the law of God because uh, it's about marriage because God says God says in that day you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. Is it in book Hosea? And when we read uh, uh, the book of Revelation, uh, we read that uh, angel said to John that, um, go, I'll show you the wife of Lamb, the, the wife of the Lamb. And this wife is a new Jerusalem. You should understand that. And it, it's about, uh, if you understand that we are only bride of Christ, it means we proclaim that we are not in marriage with God, we are outside of that marriage, and we are not united. In this sense, maybe that's how it works. Emmanuel, so I just want to like keep up. Um, are you saying Jesus only becomes legitimate after the incarnation? Jesus, he was a, a, a legitimate child of God, yeah. Because he well, he was born well, inside of marriage, yeah. But you, well, only at the incarnation, right? Like, are you saying the son was created, or was the son eternally begotten? Created, but uh, it's not about physical creation, yeah. Because when we read about creation and the world, like forming, making. Uh, creating well, it's about spiritual creation sense. it's about new creation in mm -hmm. what sense is he god then i don't understand he's created right you're created i'm created and you're saying like the sun is created also right because god is spirit and god creates and god creates spiritual things and god says i create yeah, all we're, new we're, and it's about yeah, new creation it, it's about re regeneration we're partly spiritual as well yeah so i don't understand what's What's the difference between Christ and every other person? Is it just the difference no between no mother thing, or no no maternal like no um human father? Is that is that the only difference? Uh, sorry, your your microphone not, is oh, not okay. clear to me. It's not very loud. Yes, I'm getting yeah. closer. Yeah, it's so better. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm mm -hmm. just talking about like Jesus, and it sounds like you're saying like he's created, right? There's a spiritual component to him, but he's created just like everybody else, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, he creates new creation. Uh, and new creation, I, I mean, when we read the Bible, we can think about three kinds of creations, creations. Uh, we, uh, the first, when we uh, when we read the Bible, we are like stupid children without understanding. We and we understand everything in only literal sense, because children can understand figurative language, because children can uh, understand only literal language, and the, the children understand uh, all things in, only in literal sense. Uh, but that because when we read about creation, the first we think about physical creation. It and it means that we are like materialists. But, and this is the first level of understanding, but um, the next level is uh, to think about uh, spiritual creation. And, uh, and we can understand that, we can see in the Bible that uh, it means about uh, old spiritual creation and new spiritual creation. Yeah, the, because the Bible doesn't say uh, anymore. I mean, the Bible never says about material creation <laughs> because bible is a spiritual book and bible says only about uh, spiritual creations like the old spiritual creation and the new spiritual creation and the the old spiritual creation is like the church of jews who who were waiting for the 
coming of the Messiah, but uh, and they they were spiritual persons, but they did, didn't recognize uh, th their Messiah that because they um, killed Jesus Christ, and it means that Jews mean were all false. Do they kill him spiritually, yeah. or do they kill him physically? I mean, they killed him by How? physically, and but oh, he... physically. Okay, so you're you're you've got that childlike reading then. Like, don't don't you think it would be more intelligent and more thoughtful to talk about how you know by killing they simply mean some type of like you know rejection of his teachings, right? And in, and an ignoring of what he was saying that they killed him in a in a more figurative sense, correct? Like, why why would you say yeah. they killed him in a physical sense? Like, I'm just yeah, this is next thing. level. Yeah, that's right. Like, we can we can take all of the physical stuff away and then we've just got like a Jordan Peterson milkshake. I just think it's babble. Like anyone can do yeah. this. I don't find it intelligent. I just, I just I kind of find it fruitless. Like if you, if you don't think the incarnation was something different, right? If it was something immaterial becoming material, then I just, I don't understand like what the gospel even means. Yeah, because in, in spiritual sense, yeah, in physical sense, uh, they killed uh, um, uh, man, that man, Jesus, Jesus Christ. But in spiritual sense, they killed the truth <laughs> because they didn't understand the spirit of the law. Because a, a, every earthly judge uh, must know the, that contradiction between the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Because Jews uh, uh, knew uh, well the letter of the law, but they didn't understand the spirit of the law. That because by killing Jesus in spiritual sense, they killed the truth because they didn't have mercy and charity in their hearts um, because uh, they separated truth from uh, charity. And uh, because if we, if we separate truth from charity, it means we kill the truth because we read the bible in only literal sense and it, it means that that jewish church uh, was uh, the old spiritual creation but jesus was teaching about the new spiritual creation <laughs> he, because jesus established new church and did, new church did he, i mean did he actually uh -huh. write uh -huh. did he actually write physically uh, new church no it's spiritual new yeah, church is yeah. spiritual church Christ. I'm mm -hmm. saying, did Christ rise physically? Uh, sorry, say that again. I, I, I didn't well, catch. Did, did, did Christ, mm -hmm. did Jesus rise? You said he's killed physically mm -hmm. and he's also killed spiritually. Did he rise physically? Did he resurrect physically? Yeah, I believe he he resurrected physically, but it's more important to understand what it what that means, and because we we should understand the meaning of his resurrection. But I mean, I don't think we need to like armchair philosophize about it. Like I think Jesus actually tells us, um, and he he gives his disciples like a commandment, right, a commission. To, to go out and do something right so it's not it's not like we need to guess what the role of the church is on earth right like yeah we're told mm -hmm. yeah so you know what i mean like that's what i think it's when he says like go and make disciples of you know every nation right? like is that going to be like some esoteric meaning or is that going to be actually like mission work in practice Yeah, because uh, Jews didn't have mercy, because Jews had only religion, religion I mean, Jewish church uh, in the days of Jesus Christ had only religion system. Uh, they had that because they they became the old church. Old church do doesn't bear fruit to God because uh, she, she became old. Uh, but Jesus established new church. It means uh, it's Did about the church teaching. church fruit now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the name of, of the church is New Jerusalem. And New Jerusalem is uh, the teaching about spiritual 
meaning of uh, the Bible. And Swedenborg uh, writes only about spiritual meaning of the Bible, and he calls uh, his doctrine New Jerusalem, because New Jerusalem is, is the next level of understanding of the Bible. It's like angelic well, language. I feel like, I feel like it's upside down. I, I would say your understanding is the simpler one. Like, um, it, it costs you nothing to posit your ideas about the Bible, right? Like, this is probably my critique of, um, of like, Emmanuel himself, right? He's a rich man, um, wealthy, prestige, um, lived in opulence, and then died um, at 82. Um, I I don't see a warrior for the gospel. I don't see I don't see someone who risked or lost anything for his faith. Um, and so I don't. You know what I mean? I don't see that as like next level. Like it's really interesting because I look at apostles who have given up their entire life and the security that they had, right, and died for Christ. And that's going to be just the highest level. That's going to be like the church operating at the highest level. And then people who like sit at home and talk about what the Bible means, they, that's just not going to be like a higher level. That's going to be like a lower level for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. there, I mean, there are a lot of levels in understanding of the Bible, like because we yeah. cannot comprehend the wisdom of God. And it's like a video game. You can compare the Bible uh, with a video oh. game because a uh, video game has a lot of levels. And uh, if you uh d didn't finish your first level you cannot play your second level because you don't understand that but it, when you read the bible and you understand the bible in literal sense you cannot uh, play your first level in understanding the yes, bible yeah i, I again I, I don't think that that deals with what i said i i think some christians went to their death at the hands of you know romans um or other pagan rulers um with very Only, little understanding, with very little understanding of the Bible at all, right? And I'm just saying, I think there's much fruit there, right? And then I look at some people, um, even academics, who write, you know, giant system, like um, systematic theology volumes, and they might not have any fruit. Do you know what I mean? So I just, when you talk about the level, um, there's just not a lot of coins collected even though you could write tons and tons on like, you know, systematic theology and it, you could understand very little about the Bible, physical or otherwise, and you could give up a lot for Christ. And that's going to be like very visible fruit. So I just, you know what I mean? I just don't agree with like your linear description of the levels. Oh. I don't know. What do you think? What do you, like I'm saying like, um, if you if all you do is think about the Bible and write about the Bible and hypothesize about the Bible, what what has your fruit been? Like where is the fruit? Like point to it. Maybe yeah, if you because I also in my understanding our salvation depends from the level of intelligence uh, and intellect. Uh, that because we can be saved from our knowledge and understanding who Jesus is. And if you don't understand that, uh, it means that if we uh, spread the word, we, our words are not anointed because we are, out, we are outside of marriage. I mean, you think that this is good, is a good fruit, and this is a right fruit. But maybe it's a false fruit because it's about right teaching and false teaching. Because nobody when wants you to say be deceived. Of marriage? Do you mean like people who are if, not if you, married? Yeah. If if I will ask you, what is your relationship between you and God and Jesus Christ? And what can you say? And the first what you say it is your state of mind and to your relationship between you and God. Yeah. And what can I you mean, say? Because who, yeah, who, gonna who be, is Jesus yeah, for you? This is my question. That's yeah. going to be relational, uh -huh. right? That's going to be like a heart thing, right? Um, it, it, 
intellect and reason is part of that. But I, I think if if the only thing that drives your connection with God is your intellect, um, I don't know what type of relationship that is. Who is Jesus for you? I mean, is is uh, do 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 you consider Jesus my, as my your king, my, my savior, my lord? The bride but I'm talking the about church? I'm I'm talking and about heaven. family, for example. If if you are talking because the Bible says about family, because uh, we uh, we are the family of God, and inside of that family of God, who is Jesus for you? I mean, do you believe that you are one family of God, like uh, one family, well, like I'm, comradeship? I'm the son of God. Is that is that what you are? Okay. I'm one of so you you said you. Yeah, you said you you are you believe that you are a son of God, and would you agree that uh, a son of God cannot bear fruit to God? Because uh, I mean, it's like cannot mm, bear fruit. Interesting. Yeah, you ca um, you I, cannot I bear fruit I to God because that. I think that's I don't, I wouldn't say that at all. No. Because, why, why would you why because, would you assume that? Because children cannot be united with God, and because fruit is like from seed, and uh, from from conjunction, like from conjugal love. Yeah, but uh, children oh, and well, father relationship yeah. between children. Yeah. yeah, it's like personal personal well, relationship. What I'm saying is like when Jesus goes to um, the fig tree, for example, and talks about like how the fig tree is bare, barren, doesn't have fruit. Um, And he's about to enter Jerusalem, right? And he goes to Jerusalem. And I'm assuming there's some kind of like connection in the story there between like him arriving at a fig tree that is like fruitless and him arriving at Jerusalem, which is also fruitless, right? Um, he talks about how he would have loved to gather them to himself, um, but they don't have fruit, right? Um Is the expectation yeah. for them to bear fruit an unfair one? Because God, God seems to expect fruit earlier than Christ's resurrection, right? at least of Israel. Do you, do you think that's an unfair expectation? Is it unfair to expect Israel to bear fruit? Because according to you, it would have to be, right? Because they would have to be brought into like some special relationship in the sense of family for him to expect fruit, because that's the only way that you can bear fruit. So how could God expect Israel to bear fruit when they don't yet share this relationship that you're describing? Uh, because God, God wanted Israel uh, to, to, to be his wife. And it's about the day of the Lord. But God says, they? in that day... Are, are, they his, are they his? Are they a wayward wife of God? I mean, that's definitely how Hosea yeah. paints it. Yeah, it's about But, marriage. Yeah, he, Because yeah the, he, he the, makes the, that connection with Israel, right? He talks about Goma of, and of Hosea. Yeah, Hosea is the, of, um, the one who has the wayward wife, Goma, and then God is making a statement about, about the people of Israel. So the people of Israel as a whole are described as um, the wife of Yahweh, right? The wayward wife. The unfaithful wife of Yahweh. So, yeah. Like, do, you, do you think that that's true? Is that true in the Old Testament, or is that just a is that just a metaphor? Yeah, Israel was the wife of God, but uh, when no. Israel uh, yeah. became prostitute, like uh, and uh, made Hodom, in, 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 because she she lost that marriage. She corrupted that marriage, and uh, that covenant of marriage was broken. Broken, because is it restored? Uh, in I, Sorry, what? It, was it in in Hosea, the the prophet in the, in the writings? Was it was it a relationship that was restored, or was it left? Broken? Actually, I think uh, the covenant was broken when Israel asked uh, prophet Samuel. Uh, to uh, for the earth a king, because God said you rejected me. Because what God wants to be the king of Israel, but when Israel uh, asked for the earth a king, 
uh, and uh, they broke that covenant between them and God, in the sense. But, but, but actually, I mean, but it's odd though that I guess in in Levitical law, there's almost the assumption of a king back before there was a king. So it would seem like even God's law acknowledges the future reality of a king. So I don't, I don't quite agree with you there either. I think. Because if you think that we are children of God, we are only children of God. It means that um, we, it, this is the first level, because we cannot bear fruit to God, because only wife of God can bear fruit to God. Because if you, if you take a look at Mary, because Mary symbolizes God's church, and uh, Mary bear fruit to God, and that fruit is the living word of God. That's Jesus Christ. And uh, our fruit is Jesus Christ too. And uh, it's because uh, it is right. the same seed yeah, and of God. When you say our fruit is mm -hmm. Christ also, do you mean a belief in Christ? Or do you mean like delivering? Because like, if it's about bearing fruit, then it seems like only female Christians would be able to bear fruit in the same way as Mary. No, because soul of... Of man is uh, female in this sense because we, because if you think that you are a bride of Christ, it means your soul uh, is a female. Wait, when you yeah, say and Jesus Christ, Christ is your bride, who do, you, sorry, who do you think the bride is? <laughs> uh, so, sorry, I mean, I mean, uh, God wants to have marriage between Him and uh, soul of man, and soul is a bride. No, uh, what is a bride? Do you have a verse? Yeah. Do you have a verse for that about the soul? Because soul, I, I, like, the only yeah. the only verses I find are about Christ and the Church, universal. Yeah, so because our I, soul, I don't want to be our soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to do some kind of composition fallacy. Um, I'm going to say that Christ is married to the Church, not to individual people, not to every individual person in the Church. But he's married to the church. Like, why would you assume it's individuals? I, I, I don't, I don't. Have you got a verse to that, or like, because I don't understand um, that claim. That just seems to be unfounded. Mm, I understand you. Yeah, my goodness. No, but you know what I mean. Like, where, well, where, I, I would, think, where would I, I go to agree the, that he wants to marry individual Christians somehow? Like. The first thing, we, we should be yeah. saved by personal experience, yeah? I mean, Jesus saves us personally, yeah? And uh, yeah, us, it means that Jesus saved, comes to us. Us saved and us being married are different. Yahweh intervenes for Israel, right, at times in the Old Testament. That's him saving Israel, but that's not him remarrying Israel, correct? So I don't want to conflate salvation with marriage. You know okay, what, I mean? what do you think? Uh, did, uh, because Mary Abraham, of, Mary intervenes, Abraham intervenes for Lot, but I don't think Abraham is married to Lot. Right? Like, you, you, can, you can advocate for someone without marrying them. And so um, we can be saved. We can come to a saving, you know, a saving faith, an understanding of who Christ is and, and the mission that he's given us, right? Um, but... Is, is your implication from that that we suddenly are married to him because of our belief in him? Uh, yeah, I, I don't get that leap. You might have to like spell it out for me somehow. Maybe, can you say your opinion about Virgin Mary? Uh, tell, can you, uh, what do you think? Was um, Mary saved? Or not? And to, yeah, uh, I, I, what the I moment when so. Mary became saved? Yeah, but my, my understanding of Mary is is going to be in relation to Eve. Do you know what I mean? So the new Adam and the new Eve, uh, Christ and Mary, um, are just going to be a restoration of the initial Adam and the initial Eve. So it's it's something that's played out in Genesis. Um, where Eve's line will eventually lead that? to that restoration. 
and and that's that's what that's the connection that I see is that so Jesus through, and his birth mother yeah through Mary right we can achieve salvation because because Christ is the is the Christ is who we receive salvation from so the offspring of Mary is the one that brings salvation and I think that's like that's like alluded to in Genesis Do you have that same like understanding, or is he, is yours different? Uh, because maybe in simple words, uh, what can you say? Was Mary a uh, wife of God, or not? Well, I, I'm talking. I'm asking about relationship no, between I mean, Virgin Mary was, was God, and, was, um, and God. Do you mean like God the Father was? Are you saying was? Mary married to God the Father? No. I, I mean, do you have a verse because of that? Or? I'm using this terminology that? to understand who God is and who Jesus is and who Mary is. Because Mary well, bare okay, fruit to God. It, Would I'll, you agree? Yeah, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. put it like this then. Was Mary married to Joseph? Mm. I'm, I'm asking about God because yeah, Jesus was the son of God. Wait, 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 one second. Wait. This will help, right? Was Mary married to Joseph? Yes or no? It's a simple question. Did say yes or no? You can explain after. In in physical sense, she was yeah. ma cool. Cool. wife of Joseph. Is, is, yeah? She, yeah. is she an adulteress? But I'm asking about spiritual sense. In spiritual sense, was Mary wife of God or not? Yeah, because you're saying, we read that Jesus you're was. The... Saying we're all married in a spiritual sense. I like. I don't even. I don't even know what you mean. Like in in what sense? When you talk about like a marriage, where two people become one, right? That's going to be spiritually correct because it's not physically. So I just see the reality that you're appealing to is just true of normal marriage where there's a spiritual connection, right, and a physical connection. But the way in which a husband and wife become one is not physical because they physically don't, right? So what you're saying about spiritual marriage is just true of all marriage because marriage is not just physical, right? You're committing your own problem if you think that. You're like, well, human marriage is material. That's incorrect. It's never been the case. That's not the claim. It's not the claim of Adam and Eve. So I guess the question is like if if you believe that marriages can only can sometimes only be physical, then I just don't know what adultery means then. I because mean, then you would just Bible have individuals engaging in sex, right? Uh, Bible do doesn't say about uh, physical things because Bible is a spiritual book and we should understand marriage yeah, in a spiritual you sense just said, yeah hang on you, you just said um she was only married to joseph physically so when you say the bible doesn't talk about like physical things it only talks about <laughs> spiritual things then the marriage reference because, between joseph and mary is going to be a spiritual one because the bible only talks about spiritual things so i'll ask you again is mary a um spiritual adulteress You have to say yes, wouldn't you? Like, what what are you left with? That's um, okay. You know, she's, it, it, she's, it, if she's your mum and you think she's an adulteress, right? she's, you know, she's committed adultery with with God because she's already married to Joseph. You know, if that's if you're comfortable saying that, right? Spiritually, of course. Um, then that's kind of weird, right? Because and what do you think? Was Mary what what can you say? Was Mary the wife of God or not? Yes, yes, yes or not? I I, do, I don't think she was the wife of the Father, no. Or the Spirit. I don't see any indication that they were married. Because when the Bible talks about marriage, um it indicates that it takes place, right? Um it's very clear that it takes place between Mary and Joseph, right? And I go, look, 
there's the part where it talks about a marriage. It actually mentions it, right? Um, and then all of the other marriages that I'm aware of in the Bible also mention that they're married. But um, I don't see that. Have you got a verse or have you got some reference where Mary marries God somehow? I'm, I'm not because marriage is, that, not, ma ma marriage, marriage is not physical uh, conjunction. It's, spirit, it's spiritual conjunction between the spirit yeah, of yeah, God and between us. Yeah. Marriage. Do you, it's conjugal are you love. Saying that, mm -hmm. Are you saying the marriage is, you're saying it's a marriage because it's consummated? Yeah, it's it's about conjugal love. It's about love. When two became one, it means they became one person. And uh, yeah, they, that's through. That's not true. Uh, I mean, you don't, you don't believe that, or do you believe that Mary became God? Through, through that uh, conjunction with God, we can be one with God. And Jesus said, remain in me yeah, and I will yeah, remain hang in on, you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. One with God is the claim of like, like when you say one with God, does Mary now share divine essence? Like, I don't know why you're not comfortable. You make the claim sort of, and then when I ask you like directly, you're uncomfortable saying that Mary became God, right? You would have to say that, right? Yeah, that I mean, yeah, not that she's connected we can to say that Mary. Be Again, Christians are all going to say that, right? We're going to like claim that we have a relationship. But I'm not saying, does Mary have a relationship with God? Okay, that's trivial. I'm asking you, does Mary become God? Yeah, we, we can say, because we should okay. understand who okay. God is. One second. Because um, who is God for you? Because we, because who is God? Well, what do you I, think about God I, and I, I, who is God? It's, okay, I believe in the Trinity, but I'm going to see one unified triune God and three persons: this is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's that's what I think God is, and I don't I don't think that God shares His glory with anyone, right? And I don't think anyone deserves the praise that is due to God. Um, and I don't think Mary does either. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what is what, do, do what is disagree? about like, the word of God? When you say the word of God, do you mean like the logos that you're referring to? I'm talking about the word of God. Who uh, uh, is the word of yeah, God? The, God. Uh, yeah, Christ, the the Son. Uh, what about Father? Is Father the Word of God too? Uh, it is His Word, yes. That comes through the Son. Yeah. That because yeah. figurative language uses this term word uh, to talk about the conjunction between the Word of God and us. We should understand the Word of God as God. Because uh, God is the word, and this is the next level uh, of understanding who God is. Because the word of God, the word of God is God's law, and the law of God oh. is God Himself. God wants us to obey His word as to God Himself, because God is the word. God may we, we read in yeah. the book of Psalms yeah. that God God, God made yeah. His word above all His names. Because do you see, yeah. it's a new name of God. And in the yeah, yeah, yeah. book of Revelation, it's, we read about Mary, the new name of God. I mm -hmm. think we've got more agreements on this, but is Mary the word of God? And if yeah. not, why? In, in, after, after that marriage, after that conjunction, she became uh, the word of God in flesh. Like uh, she became united with God because she re accepted God's words. She, it, 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 it comes to us through faith. She believed in God's words when the angel Gabriel said God's words to her, and yeah, but Mary I mean, believed in them. True? Yeah, but isn't that true? Now you're just describing again something that's true of other people in the Old Testament. Um, Abraham believed the word of God, right? Is he God? Yeah. Yes, and she she became oh, she is. became the the living word of God no, no, in no, flesh. No, no, the no. word of God. I'm just giving I'm just giving the, the the parallel example of Abraham, right? Abraham believed the word of God. 
go to a land I will show you, right? Um, yeah. You know, far from your own. Um, what, like, in the belief... Are you calling, is, are you calling Melchizedek God? No. No, no, side issue. I'm saying Abraham, so okay. I keep up. But I, I'm just saying, like, it, it seems to be that you're implying that simply believing um, a messenger from God who delivers God's word, right, simply believing that message turns you into God or turns you into the word of God. Is, is that what you think? Yeah, it means that when Abraham believed in God's words, she became one with God because she made and she made that covenant between God and him. And God said to Abraham, I yeah, am your covenant. I am your covenant. Yeah. Because the yes, covenant then, of Abraham was God himself. Okay. What mm -hmm. follows from that is that you don't need to be married. You don't need to have delivered um, Jesus, right? You, you just have to have accepted a message that came from God. And that's just going to be like true of a whole bunch of people from the Old Testament. So God is going to be like a whole bunch of people. Like the word of God will be everybody he's ever spoke to that's listened to his message. So I'm just like, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like when that's just what you mean, then that's just true. It's true of Mary, but it's true of a whole bunch of other people. Um, and they wouldn't be married to God, right? But they would be, according to you, they would have become God. Like, is this kind of sounding like Mormonism at this point? Uh, Mormonism? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, Mormonism came to us from books of Swedenborg <laughs> because Joseph Smith uh, loved to read yeah. books of Swedenborg and he, cre he created his uh, doctrine from books of Swedenborg. Well, yeah, actually, I mean, like... Yourself, mm -hmm. like a, a manual, um, like you, you would you would agree that like the the founder of like the your, the name that you're going under, right? Um, he believed in truth of many religions. You know, there were many pathways to God. Correct. Uh, say say that again. Sorry. Yeah, I I, I, I oh, didn't okay. Guess. Um, well, Sw Sw Swindenburg felt that there were many, like there were truths in all religions and that there was a series of beliefs that you had to hold and then you could find your way to God, right? You don't need to be Christian. You just need to believe in a God, reject evil, um, and try to aim for the good, right? And you could you could probably get your way there, right? He wasn't he wasn't like radically committed to being a Christian, right? No, actually, uh, Swedenborg, Swedenborg wrote that there are uh, three levels in heaven, and the first level, uh, in, in the first heaven, like lo lo lowest heaven, there is heaven for Muslims, for example. Yeah. But the, mo the most highest heaven, like third heaven, is only for those who believe in the one and only one God whose name is Jesus Christ, the living word of God. And this, this is a um, mo, heaven of uh, heavenly angels. Because this is the next level yeah, of understanding who God like is. More, I'm saying Mormons believe in Christ, right? Um, Mormons, yeah? And, Mormons. Yeah, they believe in Christ. So they have an option of going to the top heaven, right? Where would you say your position differs from a Mormon? Actually, Joseph, Joseph Smith read books of Swedenborg, and he took a yeah. lot of ideas from sure, books. Yeah. books of, one, one second. And he, he took a lot of ideas from books of Swedenborg, but he rejected the main uh, idea about one God. And Joseph Smith created, uh, implanted the idea of Trinity of persons in Swedenborgianism. And he created his own religion <laughs> like this, because... The, 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 because uh, Mormons uh, worship to 
three gods in the sense that because they believe in trinity of persons but swedenborg wrote that you should believe in trinity of person like trinity of one person of god it's very important to say that god is one and only one god like one person well i mean isn't isn't swedenborg's god just going to be anyone who accepts the word of god they are also god yeah <laughs> Yeah, everyone who accepts yeah. the word of God, he he get that marriage between him and God because yeah. God is it the word, a God, and he right? became becomes, one with God. Yeah, beca- well, becomes yeah. a God, right? becomes divine. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the moment because uh, yeah, yeah, and Jesus was in the sense Jesus was the living word of God in this sense, and we are like Jesus because if Jesus lives in us and we live in Him, it means we are one with Him, and we became one with his teaching in this sense because Jesus the word of God I mean if he received if he received the teaching of Jesus Christ it means we received his words and it means that Jesus Christ lives within us by his words it means that Jesus Christ is alive for us if we believe in his words and if he received his teaching and Jesus lives within us by his teaching actually his words live in us and uh, the words of Jesus Christ is his spirit because jesus said the words i have spoken to you are spirit and they are alive because jesus gives us the definition of spirit because what is spirit but jesus says the words i have spoken to you are spirit and they are alive and jesus says that my words are my spirit and when we receive his words when we accept his words it means we believe in his teaching it means uh, jesus uh came to us as his teaching and he became our life because his life is his teaching it means your life is your teaching because your your life is your thoughts and your thoughts are your mind and your mind is yourself it is your inner man and if you, if you accepted the words of jesus christ it means jesus christ lives in you by his spirit because you accepted his teaching you replaced your teaching with the teaching of Jesus Christ and it means that mm, it is not you who live within you but Jesus Christ himself lives with, within you because he is the living word of god and you in, in that moment you became the word of god too do you understand uh, what i mean sorry maybe here at the lizard yeah because jesus christ is our teacher and he lives within us by his teaching because his teaching is his words because his words are his spirits i his spirit and his spirit is his teaching we should understand the spirit of god and holy spirit concerning of his teaching because uh, the holy spirit is he who teaches us and jesus christ is, is our teacher because we, we accepted the, his teaching the spirit and mm-hmm. truth as well which is which is christ living in us christ's ministry yeah yeah and that's about his teaching yeah because uh, everything in the bible is about teaching of god and it is about false teaching actually this is a war between false teaching and right teaching and we, when we say god we think about uh, right teaching and correct teaching but when we say devil we say about false teaching that because if you if you think about devil as about any certain one person this is a false understanding who devil is because Jesus uh, says us uh, the definition of devil when he was talking with Jews and Jews we are saying to Jesus we are not legitimate children the one father we have is God himself but Jesus said to them no <laughs> your father is devil because he is the father of lies do you see he gives us the definition who devil is and he said he is the father of lies and we, if devil is the father of lies because we should understand devil as uh false teaching because it's about lies in the sense yeah but if if you believe in false teaching it means like like it means like uh, devil is our father because he's the father of lies but if you accepted the teaching of Jesus Christ it means that god is our father and Jesus Christ is our father because he's our teaching teacher because we received his teaching and we became one with his teaching it means if we became one with his teaching you are jesus christ himself 
because you have the same teaching. You have his word because his word is his teaching, like doctrine. Does it make me sense? Mm, maybe. Maybe we can continue the reading verse 14. Maybe it's better to understand maybe or I, I, I should close the stream maybe. If you're tired, what do you think? Because we were reading this book, maybe, and we we were, we were discussed 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 in a lot discussion. It's about verse fourteen. Maybe someone wants to read. So it's about spiritual meaning of the book of Revelation, chapter eighteen, Apocalypse reviewed. I think maybe this reading is over, yeah? Okay. I have to go. Goodbye.